In this video, I'm gonna explain everything about making a sequential LED strip. Cause people hit me up and say, I just want a sequential LED strip. I'm gonna show you what it takes to actually put one of these things together. So this is a switchback sequential LED strip. It's actually apart from unique LED and we've made it extra long. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in the video. And we have it hooked up to one of my old bad 28 channel ghost sequencers. Now this is a 14 section LED strip with white and amber. So two different colors. We have 28 channels total hooked up, but because our ghost sequencer has some blown channels, we don't get to use all of those things, but I'm gonna show you what it took to assemble all of this stuff and what to do if you ever have a blown channel. That's all coming up. All right, I got a whole bunch of stuff right here. My soldering iron is on. We're gonna take the ghost module and we are going to make a little wire connector to crimp on all of the ribbon cable that we're about to run to this little uh, unique LED strip. So first thing I wanna show you is these things come in little panels like this. And this is what, eight of them? One, two, three, four, yep. So that's eight wide. What I wanna do right now is I'm gonna separate two of these little rows here and make one long 16 long section. Actually, I'm gonna make it 14 long because that's the exact amount of channels that I have on white and the exact amount that I have on amber. So if I have it 14 sections long, that's gonna give me a total of 28 channels on this little strip. And this is a 28 channel ghost sequencer. So let's separate all this stuff. I'm gonna start soldering and then we will connect when this thing is a long 14 section strip. This is 16. I actually want to take it down to 14. So that's what we're going to be working with. Okay, John just mentioned that these things break really easily when I snapped it. And the reason is you could see there's a little line right between the two sections, the pad. Now that's basically just PCB. There's no copper, there's no metal going between that. And the nice thing is it's very easy to join two sections together like I'm about to do right now. But meanwhile, before they're fused together at all, they are really, really easy to accidentally snap into different sections. So make sure that you're careful, handle these things kind of delicately. But what I wanna do now, I know that I want to have power running to all of the LEDs, one connection running through every single LED in here, right? So to do that, I need to connect the one little section in there, which I could barely even read. <laughs> I don't even know. I, they're so small how they say. So I'm gonna figure out which one's which, and then we're gonna make a little solder connection that goes across all of the little pads to bridge power throughout. And then we will start making our ground connections after. John said plus 12 is the middle, and I believe him. But in case I didn't, I'm gonna take this picture, look at it on my phone and then blow it up. And sure enough, we can see it says 12 plus and then it says other stuff. <laughs> so 12 plus in the middle, that's all I need to know for now. So I'm gonna take where it's separated right here. I'm gonna just solder right in the middle. It's gonna be a little bit sketchy at first because when I solder this thing together, I'm going to do it without any sort of wire. All right, so now we've got one solid connection. It doesn't look too pretty, but that's okay. Cause what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to solder and bridge these other pads right here, which is much easier once you got the first one done. And then after I've got a couple different ways that this thing is being held together, I'm gonna add a piece of metal right in the middle and I'm gonna disconnect the other connections. Does that make sense? Is this exciting? Cause I feel like it's freaking boring. It's hard to talk about this and make it sound interesting. Here's a couple different things that I have. I have some 24 gauge solid tinned wire and I have some 20 gauge and this stuff is much thicker, it's much stronger and I don't need that. I literally just need to bridge a little solder connection. And this thing is freaking easy to lose the end of it. So I always end up sitting here forever bent so that it doesn't do that. All right, when you are gonna work with tiny, annoying, annoyingly small electronics like this, I like to do the work ahead of time. So I'm gonna bend that little 90 degree bend on that guy. So that thing is actually holding the space between the two pads way better than when there was no wire that was bridging it. Just the fact that I did that alone actually makes it considerably stronger than it was before. And now I don't need to have those two things there. So now instead of it being bridged on those, it's only bridged right there in the middle. You can do that right off the bat, but it's kind of hard to do that while everything's all wobbly and actually get a nice solid piece of metal in there. So if I were to be really freaked out and want need that thing to be 100% lined up and have zero imperfection, then I would mess with it further, but I don't want to. Let's just start going through and adding 
a bunch of these little connections all the way up this thing. And as a spoiler alert, I am gonna add that little piece of metal to it and connect them all with the 24 gauge wire. All right, so here is our strip. And again, it's not 100% dialed in right there, but for the purpose of this video, you get it. This is 28 channels now, which means 14 sections of amber and 14 sections of white. And each section has four LEDs. So if you look, it's a bicolor LED that shares the power connection. And then the ground connection for each of the colors goes to a little pad on the back. So all of these little guys on the bottom here are gonna be for amber. All of the pads on the top are for white and then the middle is for power, right? So those are ground connections, the middle is power. So now I'm gonna individually wire wires. <laughs> so now I'm gonna individually connect a bunch of wires to those pads and separate them to the 14 channels on this ghost sequencer. So step number one is gonna to be to crimp this on the wire. I'm gonna use a little bit longer than I need to on this wire right here, just so that we can have the sequencer down at one end, and we are going to individually start stripping these wires down. And I'm actually gonna do it to where channel one is gonna be the, the longest wire. So channel one and two are gonna be the longest ones, and then three and four, and I'm basically just gonna do a bunch of dual channels. And that is gonna make it easier to create the lengths that I need. Because every time I add a new wire to the board, I'm gonna have to cut more and more of these wires back. The reason for that is I, I like to do the wiring staggered. So the wires that are connecting down here will only be this long. So the go sequencer and then the wire will be that long. But then the ones at the far end, they'll be the full length of it instead of just having wires all stringy everywhere. So that is my idea for this. So I need 14 little groups of these guys. So that is four, five, six, seven. And then let's, I wanna put a little dab of solder at the end of that first. And then same thing on the actual circuit board itself. All right, so our very first solder is going to be the white one up top. This other one next to it. Now these wires are not strong. I can't even see what I'm doing right now. Yeah, so these wires are not all buff. And that means that as I work my way through this thing, I really am gonna wanna make sure that I have a lot of slack. So I'm gonna have to line these things up and then cut every single section. So now that's the right length. Strip the two ends and solder them on. Now, after I have a couple different little sections done, it's not gonna be putting so much stress on the little board itself. It'd be nice if there was a faster way to have these things tinned, but at the end of the day, just adding a little bit of solder to them is it. This is kind of like the follow-up video to what I did, I think three years ago, and everybody was asking, what kind of LEDs did you use? What kind of LEDs are those? So I think I will just have this be the video that I linked to from that one. Now I've got to put this little connector on there and I know that I want the red section right here being LED number one, which is down at this end because I have a little knob right there. So instead of going in that way, what I need to do, I want to go this way and then I'm going to fold it over the top afterwards. So first I need a good solid crimp on there. Yeah, these will we'll link up all these little tools, the little kit that you can pick up on Amazon if you want to have all this same stuff, get it all lined up proper, make sure that that wire is coming through nice and even, and then crimp. Okay, and then I'm actually even going to make a little crease right here, and fold that thing over. So there's another pin that snaps down on top of that, and that's so that it's got a nice solid connection and it doesn't come undone because of like pulling because it's actually gonna put all the stress right here where it's not actually got any exposed wires. Oof, I don't even know it. This is just like a freaking old one. So let's see what's on this. If I'm right, when I connect this, we should have some little LEDs light up. 
that's actually possibly a good thing. Why only that one? <laughs> what is wrong with this thing? Is it that broken? Yo, what is happening? Yeah, look at this. I'm pretty sure that I accidentally, as I was soldering everything, disconnected that one tiny little thing. Let's see if I can get in there and fix it. And if so, the programming should skip all except for that first one. <gasps> yep. I knew, I knew this one had blown channels, but that's pretty dope. So that one blown channel is always stuck on. Okay, so I have two bad sequencers here. This one has one blown channel and it was originally on a set of taillights. This one has two blown channels and I don't think it's ever been in anything. So I'm not sure what I did to mess things up on this, but I'm gonna have to use it for a project that has less than 28 channels because it's already got two blown channels on it. So check this out. If I hit the turn signal, you could still see it's going through there. And if I wanna turn that LED off right there, that white one, only way that I can do that is if I actually physically remove power from the ghost sequencer, or if I remove the wire that's going directly to those LEDs. Meanwhile, it still does cool stuff, some of like the show modes. So you can see the white LEDs do work, except for the one down here at this end, it looks like. It looks like these white LEDs are not getting power for some reason. So we've got some kind of wonky stuff going on, but we do have our nice bright strip. We're gonna make a fresh sequencer and then connect it to this setup and make sure that all of our LEDs are able to fire. I do wanna disconnect it from the ghost real quick, giving power to the main power wire on here. And then I'm gonna come through and check the actual connections here. So I've got my amber and I've got white. So it was fine, it's just there was something up with that ghost sequencer. Amber there, white there. Cool, we're gonna continue this and on the next one what we're gonna do is change the programming. So for right now, knowing that I'm gonna do some more work on this, all I'm gonna do right now is disconnect this one wire that's connected on here. So first thing I wanna do is remove my power and ground. I just gotta make sure I know exactly which LEDs those are. And then I need to remove power from the top part right here, just that one wire, that's all I'm gonna disconnect. If you ever had to do this, if you ever had to remove just one of the channels on an existing LED setup that you had because you knew that you couldn't turn it off and it was somehow like your ghost module was messed up and you just wanted to turn that one LED off, you could do this, just make sure the thing is not gonna lay back and make contact again after. So we bend that thing out of the way, are back in business, it's on, but it just isn't doing the weird stuff. So fully sequential is working fine. I could tell that there's something up with the white LEDs at the far end. And I guess that's just because the channels are about to blow or something. So we don't have full power right here, but they come on, they, they actually look okay. So for whatever reason, our programming is not covering this LED right here, but I know that it's getting connection because we checked it before. We have what we need to do round two. We're gonna make a ghost sequencer next. That'll be on next Tuesday. How Tuesday, how to make a sequencer. And then we're gonna do some programming with it as well. So stay tuned for how Tuesday is coming up.